Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Playbook for Performance podcast. I'm your host, Shauna Corden, and if you didn't know, we also have this on YouTube. In this month, we've been talking about planning to build your resilience in 2023. The purpose of resilience is so that you can bend instead of break when you're under pressure, and we want to help you accumulate the tools to do that. And we've got exercises and lessons that are totaling 20, so we have a 20-week challenge in order to do that. And today we're going to be talking about boundaries. And I love this topic because I think it of the 20 lessons, it's probably the one that propels people the furthest and the farthest when it comes to their mental health and well-being. So let's get into it. So what are boundaries? Boundaries are really like fences. They keep the good stuff in. So think your plants, your, your bicycle, whatever, your cars, <laughs> and the bad stuff out. You know, trash that's blowing around, you know, unwanted characters, etc. And it's really a definition of who we are and who we're not. And a lot of times when people have discomfort out in you know, the workplace or in family gatherings, social settings, it's because one of their boundaries has been violated. And they don't necessarily know it implicitly at the time, uh, but upon reflection, they go, oh, ouch, that hurt. <laughs> I don't like that. And sometimes it's a repeated pattern where it's something that you really don't enjoy, but you've been going along with it for a while but now you finally have the courage to speak up and say something about it. And we'll give you some tools today that will really help you with that. So, when do I suggest this lesson? Uh, I prioritize this lesson with my clients when I hear language where they describe themselves as being stepped upon or some of their feelings have been stepped upon. They might feel overstretched. So if you're working 50, 60, 70 hours um, you're burned out. That's another good reason to look at your boundaries. Um, if you're feeling resentful, so for all of you obligers that seem to meet needs for everyone else but not yourselves, uh, this would be a good place for boundaries. And uh, if you're not familiar with that terminology of obliger, uh, do check out Gretchen Rubin's Four Tendencies. Um, and she has an excellent podcast that I would encourage you to listen to as well. And then finally, just when you're ready to upgrade, um, it could be that, you know, for example, um, you've gotten into a habit of eating your dinner in front of the television and you're ready to move back to the table and maybe even light a candle. <laughs> Those are some good boundaries about, I don't do this, I do do this. And a lot of it is identity-based. And if you've read James Clear's Atomic Habits, you know that the most lasting change, the most uh, profound habits really start with an identity change in terms of things like, I don't smoke, I'm, not, I'm a non-smoker, things like that that really fuel people's behavior and habits. So, some key points. Um, a lot of people pride themselves in being super spontaneous, flexible. Those are great things. I, I definitely want people to meet in the middle. Um, the book is going to come out here in a few weeks, and I, I'm a big fan of meeting in the middle. But you do want to know where you stand on important issues for yourself. So boundaries are good. It's necessary to have an in and out. If you think about a neighborhood, a, a city, a sidewalk, a street, there's definitely, here's the boundary for pedestrians, here's the boundary for bicycles, here's the boundary for vehicles. And so those things are really important. You're either in or you're out. If you think about a tennis court, when people are hitting shots, is the ball in or out? Uh, touchdowns, you know, can we see any green between that second foot hitting the ground and the boundary? So boundaries are really important. They tell us when we're in, when we're out. Sometimes it takes courage to speak up for those boundaries. If you've been um, compliant 
if you've been a peacemaker, if you've kind of gone with what the trend is or what your community goes for, but it's no longer sitting well with you, it may take courage to step up and say, this doesn't work for me. And I can assure you that when you do, it, it will be scary, but courage is acting in spite of fear, not the absence of fear. So recognize that you will have fear when you do it, but once you do it, that will build confidence. And it does command respect from other people. They go, oh, okay. This is not someone I can take for granted or walk over, etc. So uh, especially when it's thoughtful, it's explained uh, and presented well, People respect those kind of arguments. They don't um, resent you standing up for yourself. So an absence of boundaries actually attracts needy and disrespectful people. All of you have probably experienced a friend who loves to call and take, but not give. You know, they call and they complain about whatever's going on in their life, but all of a sudden they're too busy when the conversation is going to turn to you. Um, that can be a, just a good example of the needy and disrespectful. Uh, it can waste energy because if you're waffling back and forth, your community is waffling back and forth. They don't know where you stand. And when I work with leaders, probably the most ineffective leaders are those that people have a hard time predicting how they will react to any given situation. So boundaries are a demonstration of your principles and your values, where you stand on issues, and the predictability of those. The other thing that I really notice with my clients when they have an absence of boundaries is that they tend to run around in circles about urgent versus working on the calculated important. And if you're familiar with Stephen Covey's work and that four quadrant model, you know that we always want to work on the most important things and then the urgent important things as well, but we never want to spend time on urgent and unimportant. Those are not the things that demand our time or deserve our time, I should say. So a couple of things about when you have that epiphany and you're like, I am ready to set this boundary with this needy friend, this demanding employer, et cetera, et cetera we really want to use grace because the dialogue that's been going on in your head is absent from the people around you. They can't read your mind and we don't want to use it as a method to vent your anger about them, you know, taking you for granted or abusing your time or your trust or whatever it might be. This is new information to them. And that's probably the biggest surprise to my clients when we walk through this, is that they're like, oh, I've never said anything about this before. This is gonna be a surprise to them. So we really want to inform them gently, and we also wanna make sure that we're not asking them to change their behavior. Their behavior may be well within their boundaries. Really, it's about how we are gonna behave. So you can think of boundaries as your personal rules of what others may say or do around you, okay? And so we want to inform them about how we will behave in what they will say or do around us. So for example, let's say someone tells a joke that's inappropriate. It's not blatantly racist. It's kind of, you know, how are you going to do that? Are you going to be rude about it and just go, that's inappropriate? No, you don't want to embarrass them. What you really want to do is say, you know, I get what you were trying to say, but not all audiences are going to find that funny. I didn't think it was very funny. So in the future, when you tell a joke like that, you can probably expect me to just leave the room. So that's, a, that's an example. So I want to give people a script. Now, of course, these are my words. This is a vocabulary that I'm familiar with. Feel free to adjust this vocabulary to be consistent with your words. We don't want it to seem like you're reading from a cue card that says, 
my coach said I should say da, 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 da. so just like when you're trying a new recipe adjust spices to taste so but the the real components are that you are observing in the past you have been behaving a certain way in the past you have been used to me you know acting without response when blank is happening when a joke is happening when someone's being ignored when whatever the behavior is we want to identify what you were doing when this behavior happened i recognize you did not know this blank me bothered me insulted me you know took advantage of me blah 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 because we really want to assume positive intent it could be that they're absolutely clueless about it because you've been going along with it for quite some time okay in the future i will blank so let's use a totally inane example in the past you've been used to me drinking out of a can when we have a barbecue i recognize that you didn't know this bothers me in the future I'll be pouring my canned beverage into a glass. You're not asking them to serve everybody in glassware. You're not asking for them to, you know, buy special glassware. You're just saying, in the future, I'm going to pour my drink into a glass. That's all you're saying. We're not accusing them. We're not insulting them. We're not venting at them. We're just saying, this is the way I'm going to behave in the future. Now, the benefits that come in from having this boundary is that life gets a lot easier because people don't try to get something over on you that, you know, they might do it. So they might, they might respond out of embarrassment. They might say something like, oh, look, who's too good to drink out of a can? All you have to do is go, yeah, my standards are, you know, hiring or raising and you could do it too. <laughs> Why don't you have a glass with me? You know, you can encourage them to grow with you. Keep it lighthearted. Again, we don't want it to be accusatory. Um, and then you could ask them, is there anything that you've been going along with that really isn't your vibe? That something else that you would like to change? Could be in the past, you've been used to me going to these staff meetings without objectives, without notes in the future i'm going to ask for an agenda before i accept any meeting invitations okay so those are great ways to kind of upgrade the system so as we've been saying in this 20-week challenge a rising tide lifts all boats if people start kind of going hmm what are you doing invite them to come along share the podcast with them Point them to our YouTube channel. Um, there, if you're just joining us this week, there is a theme sheet at our site that you can populate with some goals that you might have. Next week, we're going to be talking about the flip side of this, the flip side of boundaries, which is standards. And where boundaries are the kind of rules for how people will behave around you, standards are your rules for how you will behave. And so... That's another game changer too. And it can be tough, you know, just be consistent. Just like when you're training a dog, you're raising children, the most important thing is consistency because if you allow your dog to drink out of the toilet, um, and you know, then they're gonna keep doing it. But if you prevent them from doing that consistently, then they're going to go, hmm, I have to get water elsewhere. <laughs> so think of it that way. Now, we do want you to like and subscribe. If you have comments, if you need help, if you'd like to share a situation that's going on for you in terms of boundaries or our upcoming lesson on standards, do send us a message at podcast at shawnacordon.com. We would love to review your situation uh, on the podcast and share some um, coaching that we have for you about your situation. So, Happy New Year, everyone. 
Take good care. We'll see you next time.